Hi, I'm Michael, and I have some Photoshop tips and tricks for you. Today's tip is going to be how to get rid of a chain link fence from a photo. And the photo we're using is this one right here. And if you're interested, I can send you the image so you can practice on it down the line. All right, so getting started with this, first thing we have to do is we have to create a blank layer. And if you're not sure how to do that, when you look at your palette, your layers palette, down here at the bottom, you'll see a little square with a plus down the right-hand side. And what I'm gonna do there is I'm just gonna press that. And what that does is it's gonna bring up a blank layer. Now in this blank layer, we are gonna do most of the work. And if you notice, it says layer right there. Now mine says layer two, yours will say layer one, because to make this a little bit quicker, I already did some of the work ahead of time. So again, it's gonna create a blank layer, but pretty much it's like a, a blank piece of paper sitting on top of our photo because there's nothing on it. All right, so we're gonna start with that. And what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go and get a, my, my brush. And the brush I'm gonna use is a hard round brush. Now again, when you look at brushes, when you're doing anything with blending and things like that, normally you would use a soft brush. But in this case, because we're gonna use different another technique, I want a hard brush because I want those hard edges at the end. So I am gonna get my brush, make sure the hardness is set for 100%. And to pick the size, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna zoom in. And there you go, I'm gonna zoom into my image so that you, oops, excuse me. I'm going to zoom into my image a little bit so you really get to see what I'm doing. And I want to start from that upper right hand corner. And what I'm doing here is because I'm using shortcuts and, and um, quick keys, I'm using the bracket key. And if you know the right bracket makes your brush bigger and a left bracket makes it smaller. And the reason I'm using the bracket is so I can hover my brush right over the fence. So I know the size and I want it a little bit bigger than the actual chain link. So what I'm doing is I am gonna paint with black and I'm gonna start right on this one here and I'm gonna make a straight line. And if you don't know, to make a straight line, you hold the shift key down and click. So it's basically two clicks. I'm gonna click once, hold the shift key down, click again to make a straight line. Now, if you notice there, I did it twice. The reason is a lot of these, this chain link fence has a little bit of a bow to it. It's not exactly straight. So I want to follow it pretty exactly. So I'm going to click once, hold the shift key down, click again, keep holding shift key down and click again. And you can see how that made a straight line. So what I'm doing pretty much is I'm going to go through this and everywhere there's a piece of chain link fence, I am going to paint this black mark over it. And again, to get a straight line, I'm holding the shift key down. Okay, so again, so I'm gonna zoom out just so you can get a C. And you see all I'm doing is painting black right over this chain link fence. And I'll do a couple more. And anywhere that we don't want anything in our final picture, we're gonna paint black. So for example, in this image, you see it's got a little friend here, a little bit of a chameleon. You know, I can paint him. Now, if I want to make the brush a little smaller to make my lines a little more exact for his tail. So there's his tail. And go back up to the fence. So again, anywhere I we don't want, because if we didn't paint out that chameleon, he would have been in the final shot. Would, but since he's on the fence, he would have kind of been floating, would have kind of been silly. So what I'm doing is I'm just painting all this nice and making sure the brush is a little bigger than my fence so that now there's a little piece there so that everything is gone. So, and what you're gonna to wanna to do is get rid of all that fencing here. And you can see if, if I did this live, it would take a little bit of time, but all you wanna do is keep continuing through and go and paint all these pieces of fence out, especially um, where it's near the line itself or whatever you have behind it. Uh, a lot of times you go to a zoo or something and you can't can't get too close, obviously, uh, and there's a fence in a way and sometimes you think it ruined your image. Well, with this technique, you'll be able to actually get rid of that fence. So I would continue doing this until it's filled and when it's filled, it's gonna look like that. That is my final. And if you notice, there's some spots here 
where I have some breaks because I kind of want some of the green to come through. I want some of the grasses that I see growing through here because I can always paint them back later. Okay, so that's the main thing. So I'm gonna delete and I'm just gonna drag the layer, that layer I made. I'm gonna delete that into the trash. So now you can see that everywhere there was fence, I painted black. And if I get hide the background layer, you can see all that layer has on it is where the chain link fence was. So that's what you'll end up with. You're gonna cover up all the space places where the fence is. So now here's where the we use Photoshop's intelligence and we can start tell it, you know, how to get rid of that fence. And the, what we're going to use is actually content aware fill. And if you know anything about content aware fill, you know, you need a selection. Now I didn't make a selection. I painted the black lines, but because of that, and because it's on a blank layer, I can click on the thumbnail. And again, the thumbnail is right over here. So it's that little thumbnail and it shows the picture of the black lines on the fence. So that's what I want to click on. And with that, with the um, clicking on that thumbnail, while I am holding the control key, now I'm using a PC, control on PC, command on a Mac. If I click on that, what you'll notice is I get the marching ants around where I painted black. And this is one of the reasons why you need a hard brush. If it was a soft brush, you'd have that little bit of a soft edge. And we don't want that. We want it hard so it goes away. So this is the marching ant. This is now a selection. We converted the black lines into a selection. And that's what you need for content aware fill. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shut off the look of that layer so you don't see the black lines. You still see the marching ants. Now here's the important step. You want to click on the background, not the layer we made with the black lines. I'm clicking on the background itself, going up into my edits palette from edit. You notice almost halfway down, there's content where I fill. I want to click on that. Let Photoshop do a little bit of its work. Now, since I'm streaming, it's a little bit slower. Your computer might be a little faster. But once I hit content where I fill, and what's going to happen is, it's going to start making its calculations and give me this green squares. As you can see, that green square is everywhere that I'm telling Photoshop where to pull information from to fill in where the fence is. And if you notice in the preview window, it's doing some calculations. And eventually when that's done, you can see now in my preview window, there's basically no fence left. So the big key is I like working um, non-destructive. I don't want to ruin my original image. So when I'm looking at my content aware fill um, palette on the side, what you'll see is that I have options. So first off, the top section says sampling area overlay. That's the green. That's saying where you want Photoshop to sample from. And that's just an opacity setting. If you like it to be darker green, you can change that to a darker green. I like seeing through it. I think 50% is fine. So I could see what's behind it. Next is sampling options. I want it auto, not rectangular or custom. Auto works great for this. And then my fill settings, again, my color ad adaptation is default. And I don't want any rotations, no scaling and no mirroring. I want it exact. Now, again, I say I work uh, non-destructively because I want to keep that original image. So in the output setting, instead of current layer, which would put this new change right on the current layer, I want to have it as a duplicate layer so that my completed image will be a separate layer on top of it. Once you have this set, once you have that set, all you have to do is in the bottom right hand, hit the word okay, it'll do its calculations, and if you notice, it's gone. Now I still have the marching ants because that is still a selection. So on my computer, I'm gonna hit Control D, Command D if you're on a Mac to get rid of the marching ants, and as you can see now, the fence is gone. So here is before, and there's after. Pretty good job, not perfect. There's a couple spots where I may have missed um, cleaning it or I didn't make the lines perfect. And what you can do with those is you, while you're on your background copy now, not your original, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a couple of my trouble spots. And you can see a couple spots here where I missed. All you need here is using either clone stamp or your healing brush and just pick an area and start doing that like you would anything else. 
but now all I'm doing is, all I have to do is kind of subtly clean up the edges where I may have missed. Sometimes there's some rough edges, you know, things like that. Here I definitely missed part of the fence. But you see how much easier it is really to go in and clean that up. And when you're using this content aware fill, works really well. And if you want to use the healing brush, make sure you're pulling pieces of the background that are really kind of close to the area you want to fix because the closer it is, the more exact your changes will be. So I'm just going to do a couple more areas just to show you what I'm doing. And it's all I'm doing is just kind of painting with the healing brush areas that the fence got messed up. Now, if you notice, here's where I'm going to switch tools. If you notice in his ear, there's a piece of fence right there. And since it was close to an edge, the content aware fill didn't exactly know where to grab the information from. So what I'm going to do is do it myself. So I'm going to go into my clone stamp and I'm going to make the brush a little smaller. Again, I use bracket keys. It's a lot easier. And I'm going to paint some of that right back. So I'm going to be able to paint that back in you know, and make it bring the fur and things back in on this one. So, and you could be creative. You can, don't have, doesn't have to be exact because it's, you know, it's an animal. So the fur is not exact, you know, you can do some, and all you want to do is make sure that you have a nice clean edge. Uh, you don't, you know, it's, if you're working with fur or what, or again, it doesn't have to be an animal behind the fence. You do whatever. Just make sure that you're working on that and cleaning it up. But once I zoom back out, you can see the ear is cleaned up and it's not bad at all. Uh, there's another spot right over here, over his muzzle, that the fence, and what you can see where the fence came across. So I'll do the same thing there. I'll take a piece of the fur here, I'll draw it in there to bring that back. I'll draw that in and I'll fix that out there. And one thing you might notice every once in a while where the fence might have been a little close, you get almost like a soft edge. And the black there isn't really black. And that's really easy to fix. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my burn tool, which is the hand, and I'm going to set it for shadows because that's a dark area. And I'm actually just going to kind of burn that black back in. I'm going to make it a little bigger. There you go. So I'm bringing the detail back that might have gotten lost by the fence. There you go. So that is basically it. I mean, it's a couple steps. The first step is definitely the longest. You have to do all these fun black lines wherever you have fencing. And this will work if the animal or whatever behind the fence is further away or closer. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't have to be right next to the fence. It's just what you're using is content aware fill, telling it to fill in where we made the marching ants with the black spots to give us that. So here's our before and there's our after. So hopefully you like this little tip. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll, you can respond to my YouTube page. And if you have any other things you'd like to see, let me know. I'm going to be trying to do these tutorials every couple of weeks and see how it goes. I know we're all uh, itching to get and do more work and things like that. So hopefully this helps. So uh, thank you very much and uh, enjoy.